It's nice to be here in Fall River to highlight the tremendous work that's being done by STAR to support residents of the South Coast in the fight against COVID-19. Before I get into the more details about the work that's being done here, I first want to give my daily update on testing and hospitalization. As of yesterday, we've conducted, since we started, over 401,000 tests with over 6,700 uh, 6, new tests reported yesterday. There were about 870 tests reported yesterday that were positive. That's about a 13% rate of positive tests. Um, that remains somewhere in the general vicinity of 10%, which is where we've been for the past week or 10 days, and that's obviously significantly below the 20 and 30% positive test rates we had when we started doing this back at the end of March and the beginning of April. We still have over 3,000 residents that are in the hospital due to COVID-19. And while we continue to see the people, number of people needing hospitalization decline very slowly, uh, it has been a very slow roll for the past couple of weeks. Overall, we've seen about a 20% decrease in the number of people who've been hospitalized or in, who have been in the hospital since that number peaked in uh, mid-April. The administration and the command center continue to have daily conversations with uh, colleagues in healthcare and with the hospitals across the Commonwealth to monitor their capacity levels. And we've been encouraged by those trends so far, but we're keeping obviously a careful watch on the hospitalization numbers because they do tend to bounce around from day to day. Several hospitals are still relying on the temporary space that they set up and staff for this emergency. Obviously, uh, those trends are particularly important to us because they have a lot to do with hospitals' ability to get back into the business of doing the stuff they typically do uh, when they're not battling COVID-19. We remain one of the hardest hit states in the country by the pandemic, and we still have a lot of work to do to continue to contain the infection rate and reduce the number of people that need serious care. We've also distributed over 10 million pieces of personal protective equipment, including masks, gloves, gowns, ventilators, to first responders, hospitals, and other frontline workers to support them in their battle against the virus. And I would just say that this testing site back here, which I'm going to speak about in a minute, um, the coveralls that are being worn by those folks are being manufactured at Marrow, which is a place several of you visited with me last week, which is right down the street, neighbor helping neighbor in kind of an unusual way. I also want to thank Nancy Paul, who's the CEO here of the Stanley Street Treatment and Resources, uh, known as STAR, for the work that they're doing to deal with COVID-19, and in addition, their nationally renowned work for substance use disorder care. STAR served as a strong partner with the state from the being an early partner on our Medicaid Accountable Care Organization program a few years ago right up to opening this testing site and an important part of our fight against the pandemic. We value the role of our community health centers. They are leaders in the fight against COVID-19, and we especially appreciate the work they do in many communities in the Commonwealth where they are, for all intents and purposes, the front door and the primary source of health care for many people. Testing remains obviously a critically important pillar for our, in, our, in our battle against COVID-19, both now and into the future, especially as we begin to plan the reopening process. The COVID Command Center, along with the healthcare community, got to work early on this to ramp up our testing capacity, and we now are one of the top per capita testing rates in the country. In fact, if Massachusetts was a country, we would be one of the highest testing per capita uh, countries in the world. There are only several countries that test more on a per capita basis than we do. Uh, we have the lab capacity, which we've been working on building up for the better part of the past couple of months, to test about 30,000 tests per day. Uh, the labs are currently utilizing and testing somewhere between you know, eight and 15,000 tests a day, depending upon the day. That's good progress, and it means it's possible for us to continue to expand our testing and have the capability to actually process it and to process it uh, quickly. Folks like STAR obviously have made a big difference with regard to our ability to test uh, at the community health center level. And as we continue to expand our testing capacity to monitor infection rates by region, they also provide care and support services uh, and a series of guidance and advice with respect to what's going on in particular hotspots around Massachusetts. Last week, you may recall that we announced an expanded testing partnership 
with Quest Diagnostics and 18 community health centers across the state, including STAR. That partnership is specifically focused on increasing testing in many of our hardest hit areas, including high density community communities and communities of color. We recognize that many of these areas continue to see high numbers of positive tests, including neighborhoods in Boston, Worcester, Springfield, and in municipalities like Chelsea, Brockton, Lawrence, Lowell, Revere, and Holyoke. Our command center continues to expand the number of available test sites and who can get those tests to continue to grow our response when it comes to testing because that is in many respects one of the most important ways for us to survey what's going on across the Commonwealth, especially as we start to reopen. Our mobile testing program to conduct mobile online testing, on-site testing at nursing homes, rest homes, and assisted living facilities has now completed almost 40,000 tests at 360 facilities around Massachusetts. And we've also com completed over 20,000 tests at facilities that are overseen by the Executive Office of Health and Human Services. And yesterday, DPH issued guidance to update uh, our work around appropriate use of laboratory testing for COVID-19 and expanded testing recommendations for COVID-19 for commercial and clinical labs as well. Those updated guidance guidelines recommended that all symptomatic individuals in Massachusetts, even those with mild symptoms, should be tested. And as a reminder, the symptoms for COVID-19 include fever, chills, signs of a lower respiratory illness, fatigue, sore throat, headache, body aches, or a new loss of sense or of taste or smell. That updated guidance recommends that all individuals in Massachusetts identified as close contacts of COVID-19 cases should also be tested. Early on, everybody remembers that this was certainly one of the barriers associated with getting tested. That resulted in a lot of frustration and in some cases fear of the unknown and it left our public health experts in some cases uh, with limited awareness of where the virus was. Today, with that added capacity and the hard work from partners at labs, hospitals, long-term care facilities, and health centers like this one here today, and that new guidance, we can continue to expand the number of people who can be tested, and we continue to make progress on that. When we think about the future, we need to be committed to expanding testing to make sure that people who have system, symptoms have improved access to testing and that we have the ability to test those with whom they've been in close contact. And we'll continue to provide additional information on this uh, over the course of the rest of this week as we head toward the 18th. It will not only help us understand where the infections are, but it will also help us help people isolate, participate in the tracing program, and return to their normal lives faster. And as we consider our reopening strategy, we view this as a critical component of getting toward a new normal that will help us navigate uh, our daily lives with the presence of COVID-19. And I can't underscore the importance of treatment and a potential vaccine nearly enough. But in the meantime, as the federal government pursues those options, expanded testing and tracing will be essential parts of how we manage our way forward. STAR is one of 36 community health centers that also participate in our Community Tracing Collaborative Program. As we think about slowly reopening the Commonwealth, there are many things we still need to do as part of our daily routines. And I'm glad to see so many people here today wearing face coverings in public, maintaining social distance, and washing our hands frequently, and using hand sanitizer whenever we see it. But to really bring the fight to the virus and to get ahead, we also need to identify confirmed cases and the people they might have exposed to, their, uh, to the virus or who may have exposed them to the virus, their so-called close contacts. And that's where this contact tracing program is so important. Last month, we were the first state in the country to set up a contact tracing program, the Massachusetts Community Tracing Collaborative. It's a collaborative between boards of health, the Department of Public Health, and the nonprofit Partners in Health organization to contain the spread of the disease. We believe this tracing program will be a key element toward not only stopping the spread of COVID-19, but also toward understanding the virus and who has it and who's been infected. If you test positive for COVID-19, you will be contacted by the Community Tracing Collaborative or by your local Board of Health. On that call, we want to be sure that you have what you need 
to isolate yourself while you recover. That might mean food, if you haven't been to the store in a while or other needs. We'll also ask you who else you've been in close contact with for the past couple of days before you started to have symptoms or a couple of days before your positive test if you don't have symptoms. To date, the Community Tracing Collaborative is connected with nearly 18,000 confirmed cases and reached out to more than 14,000 of their contacts since we started making calls about a month ago. The Mass COVID team includes nearly 1,600 people making calls. The median number of contacts reported by each confirmed case is pretty low. It's around two or three, and that's a good sign that people are taking the social distancing issue seriously, but that doesn't mean folks should let up on that now. If you are contacted by the collaborative, please take the call and provide the relevant information to the caller for your own sake and for the sake of your friends and your family and your neighbors and others you've come in contact with. Those phone calls will come from an 833 or an 857 number and your phone will say the call is from MA COVID team. This is very important. If you see MA COVID team show up on your phone, please pick it up. And we'll continue to do all we can at the state level to push back against the virus and to work with others to contain the spread. This in many respects, if you get one of these calls, will be a great opportunity for you to fight back against the virus and help us continue to contain the virus and make it possible for us to slowly reopen our economy. Finally, I'd like to highlight STARS efforts to make recovery and isolation sites available for people who test positive with COVID-19 here in the South Coast. On April 1st, the Command Center and MEMA launched the first regional isolation and recovery site in partnership with the Commonwealth Care Alliance for homeless and housing insecure individuals that test positive for COVID-19. Today we have nine isolations and recovery sites in Everett, Lexington, Taunton, Worcester, Northampton, Pittsfield, one that is shared by Chelsea and Revere, Boston Hope, and the Newton Pavilion, both in Boston. They were set up with the state in partnership with local municipal and healthcare leaders. People who stay at the isolation and recovery programs are provided with a hotel room and three meals a day. Many services are also available on site to ensure individuals stay safe throughout that isolation period. And across the state, these sites have served about 800 COVID positive individuals providing them with a safe environment to recover and then return to their communities. STARS referred many individuals to our isolation recovery site so far, and I want to thank them again for their work on making sure that they're doing the things they need to do to help people avoid spreading the virus here in the South Coast. In addition to homeless and housing insecure individuals, the Commonwealth also expanded eligibility for regional isolation and recovery sites to include low-income individuals who are diagnosed with COVID-19. Those referrals can come from community health centers, healthcare providers, and the contact tracing program because these individuals may need a safe space to isolate due to either a high-risk housing situation, overcrowding, for example, or they may live in a household with one or more vulnerable adults who live with them. STARS done tremendous work to provide support and services for different stages of COVID-19 and for many of the populations who struggle to deal with this on a daily basis. Their participation to increase testing, support contact tracing, and provide recovery sites for those in need will go a long way to supporting this region. The system of surveillance, isolation, and tracking is key to getting our arms around this virus, stopping the spread, and informing us as we pursue next steps. And we're grateful for your efforts here in Fall River and to everyone participating in this program statewide. It makes a difference and it really matters.